Well, happy Saturday, everyone. So we're back to finish up our journal. I am just loving this. I am so looking forward to using this this um, holiday season for all the things that we're doing. And, you know, even I think we're going to have a lot more holiday cards this season, don't you guys? I mean, seeing as we haven't really been spending a lot of time with each other and, you know, there's not a whole lot of going out and doing a lot of shopping and all that kind of stuff. So I think we're going to have a lot of cards. And with that said, I feel like this is a perfect book for this because not only can we, you know, just cut pieces of the cards and the little sayings and stuff that we might want to stick in the pockets. We can also, because we're using... Okay, so I'm supposed to have everything right here in front of me, but where are my rings? Oh, here they are. But since we're using these rings, how cool is it that when we get the cards, you can literally punch holes in them and add them to your journal. And, um, you know, like those ones that you may not want to cut up or maybe you want to keep the front of it. And, you know, like you could just get creative with them, but you can put holes in them and put them all on these rings. So make sure you're getting big enough rings. Like this one is, I think, two inch. You can even get them thicker than that. If you have a tendency to, to know that you get a lot of holiday cards and stuff like that, then just get bigger rings. These are an inch and a half, but they do have them two inches. So when you first do your book, it's going to seem like the rings are really big and floppy. But once you actually start filling this thing up, you're going to be happy for the space of those rings. Um, and also, if you don't have... Sorry about that. Also, if you don't um, have really big rings you can start off with smaller ones and then you know just source the larger ones just to kind of get going because this part of the book is easy taking these rings and taking the pages in and out so i'm excited about that fact so i got all the pockets and everything on the book that's all finished though i may still add something here and there but what we're going to do we're going to move on now to putting the holes in our paper the holes in our boards we will glue our papers onto the board so i'm going to use this for the front cover i mean for the covers of my board this green i thought would be nice and i found my leather this is like really 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 thin leather it's almost like a leather veneer it's like so thin you could it like i could literally just rip it um but it's beautiful to put on our books um, I love using it in my artwork when I want to collage with a leather. It's pretty cool. And so we'll use this for the spine, edge, and the corners. So that, I'm going to use that red. I think that looks really good. And then these are the papers I'm going to use for inside. So this, this is going to be inside covers of the book board. Um, so that'll be the inside boards. Yes. So we'll get this all done. Now this is the book that I'm using as a source reference. Um, let me make sure we can see me good. Okay. Sorry about that. So this is the source reference. This is, I, I showed this book very early on. This book is 18 something. Let me see. I think it was like 18. Oh, I think it's even older than that. Maybe it's, yeah, this is 1812. Well, this is when they, it's 1804. So it was published in 1804. Someone made notes in 1812, August of 1812. So, um, pretty old book, lots of yummy pages. I'll be actually using a lot of this book in some of my collages moving into next year. But anyway, um, I like this cover. So I want to have about this much leather showing on the edge. And then we're going to tip the pages, the edges with leather. Now, you don't have to do this process. You can just cover the whole boards with your paper. You don't have to use leather. You can use it. Um, a contrasting paper or fabric. Um, or you can um, use some kind of like a pleather or a Tyvek or some kind of other, you know, just contrasting Um piece so a lot of the leather I get I, re I source from old um, 
clothes. <laughs> I'm good for going to the Goodwill and finding coats, purses, different things that have stuff on it that I like. And so I like to repurpose it. This leather right here actually is old. It was a bunch of it that I got going to a sale and it was a lot of it I, I got. So I grabbed that from there. So basically I'm always, you know, I'm like always repurposing, resourcing or, you know, things. So that's kind of my thing. And I'll be doing a lot more of that next year too. Cause I feel like I'm going into next year and it's like a, like it's a foraging year for me. The idea of just foraging, I feel like 2020 has been like we've been so sort of isolated. And even if this continues into next year, you know, you can always go out into nature. We can always go out. So I think I'm just going to have the attitude of a forager, <laughs> even if it's just in my backyard, you know, some coffee there, discover new worlds. Okay. So that's what we're going to use as our example. So I'll put that over there. The first place I want to begin is just figuring out our holes. Now I am going to use, we can use a, I'm going to show you a few things we can do. We can use a drill. You can use a hand. If you're good with power tools, you can definitely use a power tool, a hand drill. Sorry. Here we go with the morning maneuvers. Let me close the window. Um, let me see. I have it right here. So you can use a drill bit. This, I'm finding that this 3 16th of an inch one will be a good one, which is the second one in. So if you're looking for a size, I think the 3 16 is enough to make a big enough hole. So that, cause I like my, I like these rings to really be able to spin in there. I don't want it to be so tight and locked in. So if you're not good with power tools, a hand drill, I mean, just using one of the old fashioned hand drills are perfect. Um, if none of that's the case, then you can use an awl and then you'll have to use like a exacto knife or something and just really go in there and just kind of keep on whittling out the, um, the material in the hole to make the hole big enough. And I can show you a little bit of that. So I'll, you know, I'll show you a couple of quick different ways of doing this. Um, but we have to get the holes in the board and we want it to be big enough. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is this is the front, my front covers, this is the back cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish taking this off, which basically, I wanna tear it, because I like this, um, honestly, I really like this frayed edge that I have here. And I'm, I'm probably going to just paint this up a little bit because I want to keep it raw like that. This will be the front. This will be the back. But I'm going to put um, I'm not going to actually be able to leave that raw. I do need to wrap this leather around. I don't have to wrap the leather. I could stop the leather right there. Just wrap it around the edges. So this is kind of how I work when I'm um, when I'm doing projects, I kind of just work my way through the whole discovery process. I'm going to use some of my Sumi ink because the one thing about this Sumi ink is that it is um, indelible. But let me not do that yet. Let's just figure out where our holes are and then I can do the ink and put the boards aside. So we're going to get a strip of paper that's the height of our boards it needs to be height of the boards our paper is about the same height but do your height of your boards because you know it's going to work for the paper too okay okay so that's that's the height of our board so what we're going to do is fold the paper in half. This is how I measure without going through all the changes of trying to use a ruler. Those of you who are over in my Patreon or have followed me with book binding, you've seen this before. So that's our middle right there. Now I wanted to come in about 
that much from the top. So how much is that much? Just so you guys know. You don't it doesn't have to be precise, but so that's just about uh seven eighths of an inch, which is good. It has the look of an inch, but it's not a full inch. I just kind of like the way that looks. Then what I do is just not to measure again, I take and fold it back, and then I take this other side and I fold it. That crunch in the back to Brown is my puppy. I got a new puppy. She's already huge. She's a German Shepherd and she's already, she's just, I guess she's just going on 10 weeks, but my goodness. So that's her crunching on her, her bone treat. <laughs> Apologize for the crunching. Okay, so now that gives us our three points. So those are the three places that our, our holes are going to go. Okay, so what, before I figure out where the, they're going to go on the cover, what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out how deep these are going to be. And they're going to be based on um, they're going to be based on how far this is going to go in. So in other words, I'll show you. Let's just let me, let me get the holes right and then I'll show you that piece. So what I want to do is because I want this to line up every time. I have one of the, let me just show you the kind of hole punch I have. Now this is one of these old fashioned ones, but you can find these all over the Goodwill. I tell you, if I had a dollar for every one of these, I've walked away. I, I know I'd be a millionaire because these things are all over all of the thrift stores. And you can find these everywhere. I wouldn't go buy one new because they're just too expensive when they're just everywhere. So this one has the sliders on it. So these pieces slide and you slide them over to um, these knobs here. And that's what helps it to, you, you, you can kind of adjust the depression points. So if you can find one that has these um, options on it, that's the best. You can always just use your handheld um, punch as well. So if you have a handheld one, once you figure out where you want your holes are, you can use this to, you know, it's all, you know, just go with what you have. But I just wanted to show you this so that if you're if you do like to you know forage around in the thrift stores and what have you and you look at these and say oh what are these these are it's really good to have one of these in your toolkit um, in your studio have my coffee there you can do so much with them so what you want to do is I use this one as my guide so that's where I'm and there's lines on here so there are lines for every, to line up with every one of those holes. So it makes it really easy when you're, you know, when you're doing your bit. And then this right here slides out. So once you kind of figure out where you want your, your first hole to be, you can literally slide this out so that your paper, you know, butts up against this. And then you get it right every single time, <laughs> which is important. Okay. And the bottom of the book, if that makes sense. So now that I figured out this piece, I was able to put this little bit of tape right here, which is what I like to do. So I kind of know where my, so if I put that in, I'll know where my um, holes are for my cover, right? So that's about where my holes are for my cover. But my inside pages are going to line up with this top edge, which will keep my holes nice and centered but it'll give me that play that I need when I'm gonna line it up inside of my book. So hopefully that's making sense. So if I need, so if my, if this goes in here, then I need to get another piece of tape to line up at the top. So I'll just get a piece of tape up the top here so I know where I'm putting my, my pages every time. So if you want to remember what you're doing, I could literally write P here for pages and B here for, uh, and C for cover. So I know that I'm going to line this edge up for my covers ultimately, though they're not going to go in there, but 
it's just a way of remembering. And then this piece up here is for my pages. And then that'll give me a good cut every time. So you'll work yours out. And if, you know, like, um, if you have, if you're doing it by hand, then you'll just figure it by hand. So let's go ahead and do one of these and see how well I've figured out this whole thing. I like to start at the back. If I'm going to make any mistakes, let's make it with the back sheets. Because, you know, either you can just redo a, another sheet or, you know, you don't see anything right at the beginning of your book. So it's good. So let's, so I want to get this in there flush to the back. Like that. And cut. Yay. There we go. So we have that. So we'll do the next one. Just always making sure that I've got this, the folded edge. I'm not putting holes in on my, on the open edge. That's good. That's why I like to honestly use the folded paper method because you can you can kind of fool around with it and get it closer to um, um, you can get it closer to being even than than measuring. I find it, but I'm I'm a, a visually. You know, I'm sort of a spatially, a visually spatial person, so I kind of can see things better visually than not. So you, I think her bone fell out of her thing here. Here, here, sweetie. You want that one to play around with? There you go. Good girl. Such a good girl. Yes, you are. Okay, so there we are. love this book. I'm going to have fun with it this, this season. This holiday season. Which for me, we're going to go to the, we're going to go away to the uh, cabin for Thanksgiving. Got a cabin up north here in Arizona. So up in the woods. Away from everything. But, you know, still being able to kind of be out in a different environment. So we decided that was a good substitute for being at home. So I'll definitely start with kind of whatever comes from the trip and I'm sure I'll be um, foraging and writings and pictures and stuff so and here's our last one so we'll put this here like that and perfect so here is that done so now we have all of our holes in our in our pages and now we're going to go on to figuring them out for our book boards. So at this point now, we can do two things. We can either use our cover, the, our original sheet that is the length of our covers, right? And from the edge, we can do the holes that way. Or we can take one of the pages of our book and lay it down and then just kind of eyeball um, enough from the top to the bottom. So we know we put those holes in, not only they're going to be in far enough, but they'll be right where we want them. And this is the kind of method I prefer because then I know I'm getting it right. Um, so what I want to do is, okay, so this is my front cover. This is the back cover. So what I'm going to do, front cover, back cover, I want to use the white because I can see that better because I can actually take my pencil and 
you know, make my little, the hole, you know, the space for the holes. So since it's the front cover and the back cover and I want to go inside, I'm just going to take the front cover and put it right underneath the back cover in the same position. That way when I put the holes in and I bring it back, I know that they're going to be exactly the same. So I would drill this or use um, um, my awl, which I'll start off with, um, with these boards together. So we're going to do it like that and knock them flush. We're going to take this piece and put it right up to the edge there. Now, remember, I do have a bit of this overhang here. And so I'm going to have to kind of play with that. I'll have to play around with that a little bit. Or I could just, no, we're going to do it, keep it just as we have it because this is the top, this is the bottom. So I'm going to kind of just make sure that top to bottom it looks good and that my pages are falling inside of the cover and they're good on this edge as well. Knocking them square. Let me just go ahead and get some clips. So putting that right back up to the top edge of my board. Your board may be flush and it'll be easier for you to do this. I want to keep all that, that stuff there. So it just takes me a little bit more fiddling. But the main thing is that it falls inside of the covers, top to bottom. That's the main thing we're going for. Then we know we're good. So let's go ahead and clip it. And then I'm just going to take my pencil, circle inside like that. And then before I let me just make sure I have this right. So my order got a little bit reversed, but let's just do it like this. Get our pages back in order. This is the top. This is the bottom. So I'll just lay the whole group down there to make sure that I'm happy with it all. So it looks like I could actually, it looks like maybe I should use this page as the guide because this page seems like it's the longest of all of them, see? So just make sure you're also looking to see <laughs> what your pages are doing because remember we kind of, well, that's doing good though, still going good. These are all different lengths, remember that. So because we kind of made them a little wonky. At least I made mine wonky. <laughs> Maybe you guys didn't. You might have said, oh, I don't want to do that. I'm going to keep them all nice and straight. Just depend on, you know, like what you did. Okay, so that's looking good though. I'm happy with that. So we'll stick with what we've got going here. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to make sure that my holes are going to line up. So what I'm going to do is my bone fold, my um, awl is pretty, just I believe in measuring twice, cutting once. So I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to flip it to this side too, just to make sure since this edge I'm just kind of making them on the back side too, so I'll know. And then, just to be sure, to line it up here. Never hesitate to keep on, you know, lining your stuff up and making sure it's okay. Trust me. 
That's a good thing. Okay. So I'll just do it from this side because I can see it a little better without this bit here. But of course I have to have that bit there, so I'm you know I'm gonna keep it. So let's just take it and what I'm gonna do is just kind of right through the center of these holes. I'm just doing this so that you guys can see a little better. So just just kind of like the bullseye, I'm gonna take it and I'm just going to with a really strong awl, you literally can go through both of these boards and you just kind of twist as you go in. See, and it came out on the other side. So you just kind of line it up and you just want to twist, make sure your fingers are not in the way in the back there as you go. And we can literally get our holes like that. Now they're not going to be as clean as we want them, but um, I'll show you ways to fix that. Okay. So that way we literally have our holes where we want them now. And um, now they're not wide enough really. Let me get um, one of these things. If you don't, if all you have is an awl and that's the way, that's the only way you can do it, then you can literally take um, and get, so I got a really big hole in there. I made sure that it went all the way to the back, to the, and I'll come on this side. I went all the way in there. Now the difference is that you end up with a lot of extra, a lot of extra material popping up and we don't want that. So we're going to get rid of that. The other thing, the other way to show you if you don't have a drill, but even with a drill bit, we can literally, let's find a size, try to find a size that's going to work for us here. Literally, you can take a drill bit and by hand just start sticking it in those holes, and literally, you can just open up your holes even more. Just by and it, it, what it'll do is it helps you to get that extra material out. See, so like I've got a lot of extra material out. So if you just even have a drill bit, once you've made your holes using your awl or something similar, you literally can just get your holes bigger. So there's all ways that there's all kinds of ways of managing this. We don't have to have power tools, <laughs> honestly. You can just go to the hardware store and get now this drill bit is let me get these back in here because I never know if I don't keep them. So this one is so this one was the five thirty seconds of an inch. So that's a pretty decent size to, to borrow some holes with. So just we'll be all this is our hand <laughs> we are the hand drill. <laughs> let me get this to the edge a little okay. So now let me show you what we do next. We may be because I wanted to show you guys the low tech because you know of course I could pull out a drill and just drill it through, but I know everybody doesn't have a drill or everyone is not um, as comfortable with you know with those types of uh, power tools and what have you but a hand drill is brilliant you can get a hand drill and do just just the same so now what we're gonna do we're gonna clean everything up so I just want to make sure everything is gonna be in order here perfect perfect yep okay so, our pages aside. Now, this extra material, we don't want all of that. 
we're going to spend some time getting rid of it. So one of the first things you can do is getting an X-Acto blade, just lay it right flat against your board and see how much we cut away. Just cut this extra stuff away. We'll do this a few times because so we'll go to one side and then come back. So it's like we're just shaving material off. Let's do it on both sides. Okay. And that put my drill bit away already. I did. So we'll have to do this. You're going to really want to burrow this out a few times. Just to really This is hand book binding. Just think. This is what uh, book binders did when they didn't have any power tools. You literally just burrowed your holes out. And there is a particular knife used by book binders that does this shaving. I don't have it in front of me right now, but so you see how we're getting up. We got a really nice hole there. See that really good hole. Let me see. Is it not focused? Okay. See, it's a good hole. Like we're, you know, we're can clean it out just a little bit more, but that is nice and cleaned out. So that's the, a very quick way and low tech way to get a nice hole in a very thick board. Okay, so I'm not going to, I'll do, I won't do all of these on camera because that's boring. But you're seeing how I'm, how I'm getting it done. So every time you pull material out, just use your X-Acto and shave it off. Both sides, any of that extra material. And then what you want to do is, I just use like a sanding block. Actually, I just use these little nail file blocks that you get from Sally's or, you know, one of the, the uh, beauty supply places or the drugstore. And uh, it's a perfect tool to sand off that extra bit too. So once you file it down, I mean, once you uh, shave stuff off, you can use this. To get rid of that extra material. And see, we've got a really good hole there. So let's just go ahead and put this through so you can see. The main thing is that you just want, you know, your, your, um, the ring. I like my ring to flow all the way through. I don't want... This little bit that's there, I don't like it getting caught on a whole lot of stuff. So I try to make my holes big enough that that's just going to move around beautifully. Oh, look, we're, we're com it's coming together. So I will finish up these and I'll be back with um, the next part of, we've got a kind of a multi- state you know prong process here <laughs> because I'm also going to you know before I tell you what so you can see if well you're gonna see it in order anyhow so we're good I'll be back with the next part of this okay <laughs> alrighty so now that we have all of our holes in our boards are done they are nicely bored out and I stuck with the um, just so you know the same way I showed you guys using the um, book all to punch the holes in and then I just use this to keep on reaming it out and using my exacto knife to shave away and then 
using a sanding block just to sand it down and we have nice clean holes in there and they're going to even be cleaner when we go to um to, uh, to the next step of applying our papers and our leathers. I have another trick to show you how we're going to clean those holes up even just a little bit better. But now that they're all, you know, we've, they're nice, a good size, we can now move on to a couple of other steps, interim steps that I wanted to do. One of them, and so if you guys have a similar thing going on with your boards and you just kind of want to get the edges dark, um, of course you can use a paint. I just like using my Sumi ink because it's not stiff, but it'll bleed right into, um, the papers and, uh, just get rid of the white or any kind of edge that just doesn't blend in with what we're doing here. So, and this, I'll give it plenty of time to dry, but it'll dry nicely. The nice thing about the ink is once it dries is it is permanent so you don't have to worry about a lot of bleeding or anything like that. So on this edge, I just wanted to get rid of the white. I'm okay with the brown. And over here, this is going to get covered anyway, but I'll just put a bit on this edge here. But you know, this will be covered with some papers our bookends but I might as well just knock off a little bit of that white now of course if you are not a fan of this live edge <laughs> then of course you can cut this off and skip all of this but if you just kind of want that little you know grunge sort of, you know, gives, because it's going to give it that aged look to go along with the leather and the, um, the book papers, which is why I'm keeping mine. I just wanted to look like an old book maybe that was, I wanted to have that feeling of an old book that was torn apart and then the covers were kept to repurpose again. That's what I'm going for, which is why I'm leaving this edge here. Um, if you're not going for that, then, you know, no worries. Okay. So that's one put that aside to dry and then same thing here just grab this inside bit and so this is just so when I go to do the paper if there's any white paper left over when I go to put our book my book um, uh, inside book pages in or cover pages um, you know I don't have to worry about seeing anything odd. That looks good on this side. Okay, so that's good. So those will sit there and dry. And then the other bit that I wanted to do is I'm going to use these um, reinforcers. I got them out of this pack. Um, oftentimes I find these bits, and I'm not really into the patterns of them and everything, but like there was a whole thing of these for like 40 something cents or whatever. And there is all kind of labels and different little things in there that I may want to use in the books. But of course I'm not going to use that pattern. So, um, one of the things I like to do is I like to paint them. So in this case, I'm going to use some of Seth's, um, this spray dye. And I'm going to use some of this just to spritz it so that maybe some of the color sticks on there. Come on. Okay, sorry about that. Just had to let my puppy in the room. She's out there whining. So, you know, it's kind of like this muted color. It sort of kind of looks like it can, you know, like it's, where? Where are my pages? Right in front of me. You know, it looks like it can mix in with them um but i don't really want them standing out like a sore thumb so i thought what i would do is just spray paint them all or spray dye them all this uh a gold and so i'm just gonna mist it that way any of the color that's underneath there i don't mind it coming through but it'll just uniform everything and kind of give it that holiday glow you know and then these will be put aside to dry so we'll just kind of spritz them
just let them dry. So that's that and I'll leave these aside to dry and it'll just knock back the um, the color a little bit. Alrighty. So this is what it's looking like. It's looking really good. Love the color. So we'll do these front and back. I don't know, see like my camera might have stopped there for a second. Not sure why. But anyway, you got the idea of this. What's important is to definitely use your um glue stick. Because they'll just not be sticky enough. Unless you just happen to have some uber sticky ones, if you would happen to, go with it. But over time I find over time in use I find that even the ones I thought were pretty sticky kind of start releasing so I think I'm just going to be shy because I think I have 50 of them and I think I need 60 <laughs> so I, I'll dig up a few extras from one of these packs okay So there we have it. <clears throat> so front and back, we'll do those for all of them. And um, you don't have to worry about the inside. Just doing the outside edges are nice. It kind of gives the consistency and then you don't have to worry about, it just gives strength to those pages. Alrighty, so I'll be back with the finish.